Samsung for 2022. It's the Q60B, so done the Q60 for the last two years, usually in a 43, this one's a 50. Check the timestamps in the description, I'll put dimensions and so on. Definitely check the dimensions because it'll probably have feet on it, so I'll put the feet width in there. Also, I'll put a link below, you can fit a universal pedestal sand, so a central base to any of these models with wide feet so it will fit your furniture. Top of the box, first of all, we've got the instruction book and remote pack. Two feet there, quick setup guide, and that's about it. So, quick setup guide, pedestal feet, instruction book and remote pack. TV from the front, feels nice and slim again, from the side and the back with some energy rating labels there as well. Remote control and instruction book pack. Standard remote, smart remote, UK figure eight mains lead with the right angled inputs. Treble A batteries for the standard remote. Clips there to keep the cables tidy down the back of the feet. CI card slot reader. It is the more premium smart remote on this year's model with the solar cell. We've got power on and off at the top, voice command button. That takes you to settings, number and the colored buttons for different applications. Multi view, cursor arrows left, right, up, down and enter. Back button. Press play pause, you've got rewind, fast forward and so on on the cursors. Back, step by step, home button, volume rocks up and down, so like that. And in for mute, channels rock up and down and in for guide. Quick access or quick fire, Netflix, Samsung TV Plus, Prime Video and Disney Plus this year. Flip it over, we've got that solar cell on the back, so Leave it face down, it will keep it charged or help to keep it charged or to even top it up. Pull out the tab there. You can just see there, we've got USB Type-C input. So if it is flat, totally dead, charge it up off your USB phone charger or whatever. Now looking at the standard remote, so we've got power on and off at the top. Source button, channel numbers, teletext, not in the UK. Pre-channel to the previous channel, volume up and down, channels up and down. Mute button, channel list, quick access, Netflix, Prime, Samsung TV Plus, and Disney Plus. Cursor arrows up, down, left, right, and enter. Got the home button there as well. Return, to go back step by step. Exit, all the way out. The colored buttons for what they refer to, depending on apps and media playback. Shortcut to the settings, info for the info bar, audio description and subtitles there. Play, stop, pause, forward and rewind for apps and media playback as well. Flip it over, push down there and slide away. Travel A batteries into the back. Quick look at the quick setup guide. It's got a list of the inputs that are on the back there. A list of contents and a fly landed. Too easy to lay it on a large flat surface, bigger than the screen. And here it's referencing, we've got that little flip switch on the bottom of those pedestal feet. And it gives us the difference in the two configurations. So if we go two and two, it's about 25 mil, almost an inch higher up, just to give you that gap beneath for the sound bar. So you lay it on your surface and insert those feet there. Onto the other side, connecting your power and so on, switching it on. Some key dimensions there for the 43, 50 inch and 55 inch models with the weight factors and so on. What those dimensions refer to. Then a bit about the visa mounting on the back as well. And obviously using the appropriate length screws. We can see this is the part that's gonna slide into the back of the television. It's got this little flip switch here. So if I put it there, there's gonna be a larger gap beneath the TV. We can put a sound bar there then without the sound bar obstructing the screen. No sound bar, 
flip the switch back and it'll keep the TV low to the stand or whatever it's on so you've got a nice small gap there to keep it looking minimalistic. They're symmetrical as well so put them either side shouldn't make a difference. I've also got those little bits of rubber on the bottom so it won't mark your table. Now I've got the TV laid out on a large flat surface as per instruction. It is actually marked left and right where the pedestal feet go but the feet aren't marked because like I say they're symmetrical anyway. Simply we just put it into that slot and push it up like so. Same for the other side and that is pretty much it. While we've got it down there looking at it at the back we can see figure eight mains input into there so we can pop the cable in give it a wiggle so it goes all the way in and we've got these cable grooves again so we can tuck our mains cable into there down the back of the leg we've got this clip we can then clip that over the leg just so when we're seeing it from the front we're not looking at the cable it should be tucked behind there hidden from view HDMI cable for example that one's actually going to go straight down the leg again we could just put the other clip on there like so to keep that in place alternatively if we want all the cables to go down that side tuck it into that groove just to keep it nice and neat and behind that one take them out like so. okay <clears throat> Onto the connections, you can see we've got terrestrial aerial, we've also got satellite input there. We've got digital optical audio out and also HDMI free on the back there. Peel that sticker off, CI card slot reader attaches there. HDMI 1, HDMI 2 is enhanced audio return channel, so three HDMIs in total. LAN or wired internet. USB 1 for hard drive it's indicated there is 5 volt 1 amp and USB 2 5 volt half amp. On to the dimensions this is the 50 inch version most important for a lot of people is the feet 75 and a half centimeters maybe at its widest point which is about 29 and 3 quarter inches like I say if that is an issue have a look for a link for that universal pedestal stand you can then have a central base to fit all of the furniture width wise across the top 112 centimeters or 44 inches from whatever it stood on to the bottom of the TV about four centimeters flick that switch it can stand six and a half centimeters to accommodate your soundbar or just over one and a half inches so again could be two and a half inches with the other configuration on the feet um, to the top of the TV just over 68 centimeters or 26 and 3 quarter inches from the bottom of the TV to that first visa hole is about 233 millimeters and it's a 200 by 200 square visa Ooh. depth for those feet from the front to the back say about 22 and a half centimeters just under nine inches. That's the total depth for those feet. Now I've got it wired with mains, aerial and insert. There is no screen protector on that, so I'm gonna turn the lights off and turn the TV on. Okay, so just gonna let the smart remote pair there. What's that done? Two options then, smartphone quick and easy. If you've got your Wi-Fi and Samsung account details, it will copy them from your phone, set the TV up quickly. I'm going remote control step by step. United Kingdom. Pop your pin in. Start auto setup. Next. Wired connection for the internet. 
We'll agree to all, okay. So I'll say install the latest software now, pause the video and come back when it's done. Okay, back in the room. Software update is complete. May still be installing it, but it's downloaded it. So I'm gonna skip the login, but log into your Samsung account for your apps if you want to go for more. Just gonna go all locations on my service provider. Just tune my channels in as well in the background while it was doing that. So quick summary there, wide internet network and all of my summary of channels. Okay, because I went all locations, now I've got to pick my Freeview provider, which for me is Yorkshire. Select your voice assistant. I quite often set Bixby up for customers just because they can find stuff on YouTube or whatever quickly by saying YouTube and then whatever they're searching for on there. So I'll skip that for now as well. And Amazon Prime, link it using your mobile phone to link your account to the TV. Quick summary of what's on the home screen there and you can quickly add a few apps. I'm just going to save as is. I see a little intro back. So we've got the new home screen there. I'm going to go straight to live TV. Oh, actually, I'm not going to go straight to live TV. So quick thing about brightness optimization there. Now asking me my tuning for the region select for my aerial. So it's where your aerial is facing. Mine is facing Yorkshire. Close. Quickly go to the menu check the eco settings so onto settings and all settings down to general and privacy power and energy saving brightness optimization i'm going to turn off that's actually not a bad one to leave on at home because it will automatically adjust the backlight depending to ambient light in the room but for the demo i'm going to turn that off also motion lighting i'm definitely turning off it will try and reduce the Lighting to save a bit of energy consumption. Auto power saving off as well. Which is pretty cool actually, looking at that. That's actually, could be a good one with the cost of living crisis here in the UK having that one on. So if it's not detecting movement or usage from the remote and so on, it will turn off after so long of inactivity. And also auto power off, that's another inactivity timer. So no commands from the remote. After four hours, it will switch off. But if you've got teenagers, probably good to leave that on. All right, so I'm gonna turn the sound up and shut my mouth. That's just live TV in the background on a Freeview HD feed. Well, let's take a look now at some of the other stories in the headlines for you today. The governor of the Luhansk province in Ukraine has described the situation in the Donbass as exceptionally bad, with no let-up in Russian shelling. The cities of Severodonetsk and Lishifansk are under intense bombardment as Russian forces try to encircle them. People up to the age of 50 can now enlist in the Russian army. The law passed by the parliament in Moscow is linked to efforts to recruit more troops as Russian casualties in Ukraine continue to mount. Under current legislation, Russians can enlist only up to the age of 40 and foreigners up to age 30. Pfizer has announced it will no longer make a profit from selling its patented medicines to the world's poorest countries after being criticized for making a profit from its coronavirus vaccines. Pfizer's chief executive, Albert Gurla, said 45 countries would benefit, covering a total of more than a billion people. Rwanda will be one of the first countries involved, and its president said Pfizer's scheme was an important step towards sustainable health in developing countries. Supermodel Kate Moss has given evidence in the defamation case between actors Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. 
She denied that Mr. Depp ever abused her whilst they were dating back in the 90s. She told the court via a video link from in England that she'd never been pushed down the stairs by the actor, a rumor to which Ms. Heard had referred. Well, now thousands of police being deployed to prevent the demonstration. Okay, so while we're on some poor live feeds, I'm going to check out the retail demo. So back to the menu, settings, all settings. That's general and privacy, system manager. Holding Pakistan's flag in his hand, Khan is also on his way towards resters, but they remained undeterred. Tear gas was again fired this afternoon to dispose the protesters approaching Islamabad, but they managed to break through despite the bad. Pretty cool. Uh, back to home mode. Scene is at a vigil being held in northern India at the Punjabi city of Amritsar, honouring the victims in Texas. That's it for us. Thanks so much for watching. We'll have to also put those eco settings back as I had them. Hello again. I think it's fair to say Eastern England had the best of Wednesday's weather. Durham was the sunniest place. Eight Probably hours of the... sunshine. And the warmest spot was Holwich yeah. in Lincolnshire with 20 Easy degrees Celsius. It, it was a lovely end to the day meanwhile. In Worcestershire. Right now, the also tells us the available batteries the there for the but, uh, smart remote at the bottom. Moving into Northern Ireland, starting to bring outbreaks of rain. It's mild for the most part, but quite chilly. Over I'll just turn that down a second. I'll try another demo. We'll try a bit of football on there as I usually do. Teams matched United against Inter in the International Champions Cup. Matched United face Inter Milan to Pogba. Sure, they're encouraging him to shoot, and he will have a goal. Pogba does get it back. Rashford, Pogba, what's he going to do? I don't know how he got that far to be honest. Okay, here come United, sure. Bring it on into the middle, nearly five to Rashford, just a little touch, took it behind the England. In. Finished level on points in third place, Atalanta in Serie A last season, Inter. Vosovic, swept deep, and uh, was missed by the Haya. And it goes to Rotary Rubini. Saka was back there, I think, to head that away. Pogba back towards his own goal. And Marcus Saka up for it. Pogba's up as well. He leaves it brilliant down in Lindbergh with the line. Brilliant still for Pogba. Where's he going? Wonderful. Well done. Good save from Andanovic. He's right. Shaw. Well, the is for the team. Oh, down the the penalty area. You know, I'm just throwing this in now, I expect. Well, towards that corner, and forced into a save. Another marvellous moment for the teenager who 
Quick movie trailer here. I will say credit to Paramount Pictures. It's their YouTube channel. And it to Ubisoft for this next gen game trailer. Avatar Frontiers, uh, Frontiers of Pandora. Again, credit to Ubisoft for that content there. That's there. It's just going to go back to live TV now. Enough of that. Don't care. So looking again, we've got the new smart hub for 2022. Looking at that there, along that left bar up to the top, we've got the ambient mode so we can have weather and info as a screensaver when the TV's on standby. Search at the top as well. Media, or we've got the menu. So menu, you can go to settings, connected devices and multi-view. Also the account details and notifications above it. Go along with media. You've got the apps there. Sign into your Samsung account so you can download more apps. You've got Samsung TV+. Plus. Live TV, Netflix, Prime, iPlayer, ITV, Disney Plus, Apple TV. Also got Apple screen mirroring built in or you can mirror from your Android devices. Rakuten, Now TV, YouTube, all four, Alexa, Samsung Health, basic internet browser. Put your Bluetooth keyboard in and whatever and mouse and you can do basic internet browsing. My5, Plex and you can edit that list there to make it your own list okay then dropping down from there you can see our recent thing which was the um, live tv quick summary of what's on now maybe on other channels and on smart and so on below that new and trending so we've got different sources there bbc disney and whatever so that's what's trending from those sources free movies 
Samsung TV Plus, popular on iPlayer and CBeebies, iPlayer again. And quickly, more there on iPlayer, Prime, and other sort of things to get your attention. So, all in all, I think it is a good TV. It'll be your entry-level QLED for the 2022. It is only 25mm thick or an inch thick, so sound is lacking. I'd probably put a soundbar on that, unless... If I'm just using it for the news and so on, it is nice and clear enough, but the sound is flat. We're not going to get any bass. The speakers in there, with the TV being so thin, they're going to be tiny. At home, I always have a 5.1 system anyway, so I usually recommend something like that or a sound bar at the least if you want a sort of dramatic sound and a bit of punch. It is an edge lit TV, so you will get a bit of backlight bleed as well here and there shining through. Bright content looks awesome though. Dark stuff, you may see a bit of the light shining through. So that is all for now. Goodish.